All right, so in this video, I'm gonna do something a little more different. I'm going to do kind of a vlog of my day and I'm going to show you more of my projects that I'm working on. So hopefully you enjoy it. And it's almost 8.15, so I'm about to get into my stand-up meeting. So let's get into that. Yeah, so yesterday I uh, was just finishing out the forms that I was doing for the production forms page and uh, just coordinating with David on uh, the ones he was finishing up. So after that, I uh, looked at getting those all in the live uh, dot tools. So we got that deployed and uh, fingers crossed for no issues. But uh, that was it for me yesterday. All right, so now that I'm done with my stand up, I'm gonna grab a quick cup of coffee and then I'm gonna meet you back here. All right, so now that I'm back, I have my coffee. I am ready to get some work done. So first thing I wanna do is just check out our scrum board. We use a free software called iScrum, but what I wanna do now is just update this task that I started on Monday. Since this is the last day before the end of the week, I'm going to go ahead and just update the things I've done um, that way I don't forget. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my coding environment. And after that, I'm going to discuss what I've been doing this week and what I did a little bit of last week. So let me get that started. All right, so starting last week, I started looking at a tool called Tooljet. It is a low code framework that allows you to build custom internal components really quickly. As you can see here, this is a component that I built. It didn't really take me that long. Over here on the right side, you have these different components that you can literally just drag and drop out and you can put them anywhere on the page and then you can easily give them data um, this is the table data right here. This is the table I literally just dragged and dropped out. It's honestly a pretty cool tool. It's pretty simple from what I see to build um, tables and to do different forms. That's basically what we're using it for. So starting last week, I started getting my hands on Tooljet and all throughout this week, I've been using Tooljet to create forms. Overall, the whole point of us using Tooljet is to replace forms that are on our live site that haven't been used for a while. And they were also created by a developer that no longer works here. So it's stuff that we haven't touched in a long time. So eventually the goal is to have these forms all set up with Tooljet and we are going to be completely hands off. We're just getting them started. We're putting them into the live site and iframes and eventually we're going to be completely hands off and any editing done to the tables will be done by the analyst. So that's why we use Tooljet. That way people who don't have a developer's skills can easily edit the tables with minimum help from us. So today I'm gonna to be doing kind of the same stuff. I'm going to be looking at a form that I started on a few days ago, but I haven't looked at it in a couple of days because I was doing some other forms that need to get done quicker. So I'm gonna look at that, I'm gonna try and get that finished up, and you're gonna take a little look with me. So this is the form that I started working on a few days ago. It's pretty much finished. The only issue is I used querying the database to accomplish it. What I was supposed to do was use our microservices backend that we just created. So before we had a monolithic backend, but we just converted all of it to a microservices backend. So you can see over here, each one of these um, file paths is its own server. It's its own microservice. So instead of having um, a huge monolithic service that um, if one thing goes bad, the whole thing could go down. We have it broken out into several microservices. So if this email microservice breaks, then everything else will still work except the email one. So that's a huge benefit for us. So I didn't realize that we were going to be using this new uh, microservices structure to 
do this form. So now I need to go back and instead of querying the database, I need to basically create some APIs to query the database for me. All right, so it's getting pretty close to lunchtime. I'm gonna go ahead and heat the oven up. I grilled some chicken drumsticks yesterday and they were mighty delicious. Is it good? <laughs> All right, so after getting some lunch and going for a quick walk, I'm gonna try and get this component to work. All right, so after troubleshooting some stuff and coding for some time, I was able to get rid of two of the queries. The last query that I have left to get rid of is the one that produces the data for this table here. So one of the queries I got rid of because in Tooljet, you can create variables. So I created a report data variable and I just stuck all of the data for the, these dropdown components here. I stuck all of that data in this variable and I uh, set it to run this query on application load. So uh, it's kind of like, use effect, I believe Tooljet uses React. So when the application loads, it's going to automatically create this variable with all of this data. So then I have with departments, I have it um, listing the option values. I have it listing them out based off the data that is right here. So I was able to get that query done. The other query that I was able to get rid of was the query that after you hit the add report button, it's the query that inserts all of the data into the database. So I'm hitting this submit API here in my microservice. As you can see here, I did a test on Thunder Client. Um, usually I just use Thunder Client instead of Postman because it's just simpler to get to, but Postman is more advanced, so that can sometimes be a better tool, but I hit the uh, post here with this data and then as you can see on the side i'm getting a status okay so was able to get that query done the last query i have to do is this one that populates the table Next thing i need to figure out is how to create a fetch route so i can get all of the data and i'm having a little bit of uh, trouble but i'm hoping i can get that before the end of the day but that's currently where i'm at right now all right, so I did figure out this last query that I needed to fix. Um, I was having an issue with getting the API to work. So before I had the get list in the channels, which isn't where it's supposed to go. So I created the, um, the actions here and then added it in here. And we hit the API, always a good sign. Now all I have to do to fix the Tooljet component is to set it up to hit this API and then that'll be all done. The last thing that I want to talk about is just the benefits of being at a small company. A benefit of being on a small team like this is that we're doing new projects all the time. So when you're at a big company and you're on a team that's like dedicated to one certain project for a whole year or something that can sometimes be a rough gig to be in one of the reasons i became a software developer is because i really enjoy learning new software so being on a small team like this and taking on projects new projects every week or two i really enjoy that and i think it's a great benefit of being with a small company there's obviously some cons to it but I really enjoy my job and I really hope that you found this video to be helpful to see what projects I'm actually doing during my day and how I work through the problems. I really hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more videos like this. I'm trying new things. I'm still new to this YouTube thing. So let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.